Welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about lipids, in particular triglycerides, which are found in dietary fats and oils, so the stuff that we eat, and phospholipids, which make up cell membranes and form a bilayer around our cells. We'll look at phospholipids in more detail in another video. Now, before we look at triglycerides, let's talk about lipids in general. Lipids are made of three main elements, carbon, oxygen and hydrogen, and they have lots of hydrogen. And when this is oxidized, that releases lots of water. Lipids provide a source of energy for most cells, and they are more energy dense than carbohydrates. So one gram of lipid can actually release more energy than one gram of sugar. Secondly, lipids provide insulation. One way is that they reduce body heat loss. And the other way is by acting as electrical insulators. For example, nerve cells that have a type of lipid around their axon called myelin are much faster at conducting electrical impulses. But more about this next year. The other job of lipids is to protect our organs. Most of our organs are surrounded by a layer of fat and this helps to protect them against mechanical stress. And finally, waterproofing. And this helps to reduce water loss in organisms. For example, we know that plants have a layer of waxy cuticle above their leaves and this helps to reduce water loss. This fatty layer is also found on insects as well and it has the same purpose, to reduce the loss of water. Okay, so let's look at triglycerides. Now a triglyceride is made of one molecule of glycerol joined with three fatty acids. A glycerol is a type of alcohol and fatty acids are derived from carboxylic acids. This is glycerol, and this is a fatty acid. This OH group is the functional group of an alcohol, and this C double bond O with an OH is the functional group of a carboxylic acid. The reason it's called a fatty acid is because of this long hydrocarbon chain, sometimes referred to as a tail. Now, when they come together, the H from the alcohol and the OH from the fatty acid join together in a condensation reaction. So just like this, we create an ester bond. Since there are two more OH groups, that means two more fatty acids can join, forming a triglyceride. And we have three ester bonds. This is also known as a triester. Whenever an ester bond forms due to condensation, a molecule of water is released. Since we've produced three ester bonds, that means we're going to release three molecules of water whenever we form one triglyceride. So remember, for one triglyceride, three molecules of water are released. Water can be put back in, and this breaks the bond to give us one glycerol and three fatty acids. This is known as hydrolysis. Hydrolysis means splitting using water. Okay, let's move on to the physical properties, in particular the melting point of triglycerides. The main differences in physical property is due to the hydrocarbon chain. So here we have two different fatty acids. The first one has no double bonds in the hydrocarbon chain, so we say it is saturated. The second one has a carbon to carbon double bond, so this one is unsaturated. Now the third one has many carbon to carbon double bonds. This is referred to as polyunsaturated, poly referring to the fact that it has many carbon to carbon double bonds. That means if it has one double bond, we can call it monounsaturated. Now, the carbon to carbon double bond causes the chain to bend. If the chain bends, the molecules cannot pack closely, and that makes it easier for it to turn into a liquid. So here we can see that the lower you go and the more double bonds you have, the easier it becomes a liquid. Let's try to visualize this. So here I have a triglyceride. The square represents the glycerol and the three lines represent the three fatty acids that are joined to it. On the right we have another triglyceride, however because of double bonds the fatty acid chains are bending. So on the left we can see that we can fit many triglycerides closely together. And between the chains, we can see that there's going to be lots of attractive forces, also known as intermolecular forces. 
This holds them tightly together and gives them a high melting point. However, with the unsaturated triglyceride, we can see that because of the chains bending, they cannot fit closely together. So there's only going to be small amounts of attractive forces, and this gives it a low melting point. Okay, let's finish by talking about how the structure of triglycerides relates to their function. First of all, they have a low mass to energy ratio. That means that they are good energy storage molecules. They don't weigh much, but carry a lot of energy. And this is useful for animals because it makes it easier for them to carry triglycerides as opposed to carbohydrates. Also, they are large and non-polar. This makes them insoluble in water and does not reduce the water potential inside cells. This means the cells will not swell up. And finally, they have a high ratio of hydrogen to oxygen. So if you look at this triglyceride on the left, we can see that in this one molecule, we have six oxygen atoms and loads of hydrogen atoms. This is very useful because a lot of water can be released when oxidized. So animals that live in a dry desert, such as camels who store fat in their hump. Hey guys. If that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.